Hello everybody and welcome to another Blender follow along tutorial video. Now if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on this, if you don't know, a little while ago I did a series of videos to teach people how to use Blender. And if you don't know anything about Blender, I don't recommend you start with this video. I recommend you go back to the beginning of the absolute beginner's guide to using Blender for making models, especially for making models for 3D printing, which is what I do a lot of. If you know a little bit about 3D modeling, but not Blender as well, I have a midpoint in there that you can jump in. But if you've already done that, or if you already know Blender, this will be a great place to start. Now, these videos are designed for you to have Blender open and running and following along. So to that end, I'm going to be moving at a little bit of a slower pace. If I'm talking too slow or moving too slow for you, you've got speed controls. Go ahead and, and speed me up a little bit. It's okay to do that. I, I give you permission. And if I'm going too fast, well, remember to pause it and rewind it. And I think you're going to have to pause this video a little bit because there might be parts that I'm going to fast forward. But never mind. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, for this particular video, we are going to be making Christmas ornaments because Christmas is coming. Now, this particular ornament is very cool because it's personalized to whoever you're giving it to. If you look very carefully at the shape of this ornament, you'll see, I think, yeah, right there. It's got my son's name in it in a nice little cursive font. So before we even jump into Blender, you guys have a little bit of homework to do. Now you can you can jump ahead if you're just doing this for practice. I will have a link in the description where you can download the same file that I will be using in this one if you want to follow along like that. But if you want to do your own name, what I recommend you do is you go and get a piece of paper and a Sharpie. I want you to write this nice and chunky, so don't use a very thin pen. Use a Sharpie and write in a cursive font. Make sure that all the letters are in some way connected and write your name in signature form if you want. Then you need to take that image that you've made and somehow get it into your computer. Now you've got a couple of options. If you've got one of those fancy scanner printer combos, well, you can go and figure out how that works because... Most people haven't used them in a little while. Scan it in, and that's going to give you the best way. But if you can't do that, you can just take a picture with your phone if you can do that. But make sure it's well lit because the goal here is to have something that is as black and white as possible. So if you need to take it into a photo editor like paint.net, which is also free and I highly recommend it, then adjust the settings until the only black part is the name that you've written. Just do that. Now, let's jump into Blender. So here we are, and I'm in Blender 2.91. If you're watching this in the future, what's life like after COVID? <laughs> but chances are all of these features will work because 2.91 introduced two really cool features that are going to change the way that we do this project. In the past, we would have to take that image that you did, that you made and we would have to convert it to an SVG either using an online tool or the trace function in Inkscape but we don't need to do that anymore because of what Blender 2.9 can do so let's jump in and do that. Here I've got my default scene as I set it up in the absolute beginner's guide. I've taken a default cube and turned it into a, a flat build plate that I can use to cut off. We're not going to use it for that but if I, oh, I need to turn on my, have I got my screencast keys? No, I need to turn those on for you really fast. Now you guys get to see what keys I'm pressing and stuff. The side panel here, you open and close with the N key. And if you go to the item and I can click on this thing, uh, this build plate here. So if I click on the cube in my, in my scene, at the bottom of the transform menu under item here, you can see the dimensions of it. And I want to change the dimensions of this to, instead of being 150 millimeters, just 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. That is about the size of the ornament that we're working with here. So this build plate, this, this plate object that I had you guys add at that point, if, if you didn't, but 
this is what I use it for to give me a scope of the print that we're doing. So there we go. That's about the size that we're going for. Now, I want you to move your mouse pointer to the far right and lower right side of the 3D view until it becomes a little, a little crossed. You see it over there in the lower right hand corner, click and drag into the 3D view and we're, we're splitting the 3D window. We've done this before, but we're splitting the 3D window. But I want you to take that left side window. I'm going to make mine just a little bit bigger and close the properties panel on this side. But in the upper left of that, there's a drop down that says editor type. And if you click it, I want you guys to choose on here a file browser. There it is on the far right side of the menu. File browser right there. Now we've got a file browser in here. And I want you to navigate in here. If you need to make it a little bit bigger so that you can navigate easier or whatever, um, do that. But I want you to navigate to where you have that file. I put mine on my desktop. And then I want to make it just a little bit smaller. And in fact, if you make it small enough that it can't do the sidebar anymore, you just get the middle menu, which is kind of cool. And on the top of that file browser, we have the display mode that it's going to use. Choose the one that is the thumbnails. Click that and you can see now everything's expanded out into thumbnails, which is pretty cool. So here's my signature, the 3DP Professor, which is my handle on Twitter and Instagram. And I wish it were YouTube as well, but yeah, YouTube. I've got it in, uh, oh, actually I want this one, PNG, but it'll work JPEG, PNG, whatever. Click and drag that onto your scene. And actually, I made a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that new object. And I'm going to switch my view with my mouse over the 3D view. I'm going to hit 7 on the numpad to jump to top view. Or you can use the compass up here to jump to top view. Just make sure we're in the top view when we do this. Because it places the object relative to your view. And I want it to be flat to the surface. And then drag that image into the scene. And there it is in the scene right there. Now we can come down to the lower left hand side of the 3D view, click and drag into our file menu and just close that up and make it go away. We don't need it anymore. This is very, this is a new feature that Blender added where we can drag pictures into our scene and it adds them into the scene as an empty with a picture. I'm not really sure about this. I feel like I need to explore this a bit more because I feel like something happened here that I don't fully understand, but it's very useful because we can take this and turn it into an object that we can manipulate. This, however, while we can hit G to move it or, or use the gimbal to move it, it's not, um, it's not an object. It's just, it's just a image. But if we make sure that that object is selected, either in the outliner or by clicking on it, go up to the object menu and choose trace image to grease pencil now it's going to have to go through a couple of steps and it's kind of frustrating i wish we could do this in one step but that's all right blender couldn't do this before so this is exciting extract to a grease pencil now you'll see we have a new grease pencil object and if we just select that grease pencil object and move it we'll see the empty still there and our grease pencil object is still there we can click on the empty and just delete that we don't need it anymore now grease pencil objects are pretty cool but they're not objects. We can't solidify them. We can't modify them. Although, if you check out what people are doing with grease pencils, they're doing like 2D animation with these things. They're really cool, but that's not what we need. We need to select the grease pencil object, go up to object, and convert it to, and we want to convert it to, we can't go to a mess yet, but we can convert it to a polygon. A Bezier polygon. What did I choose there? Polygon curve. Okay. So now you'll see on the in the outliner view we have our grease pencil and we have what they it, it's called a trace. If we select the trace, move it, there we go. It traced the edges of our grease pencil, but you'll notice it didn't fill it in. And if we select the grease uh, the trace and go into edit mode, you'll see yeah it's not a solid object. And in fact we can't. I don't know how to fill in a a curve object like this sorry i forgot the word for a second i don't know how to fill it in there may be a way and if you have figured it out let me know in the comments but 
I'm just going to go ahead with the next step. I'm going to select the grease pencil and delete it. I'm going to select my trace and I'm going to go object mode and I'm going to go convert to and now I'm going to convert it to a mesh. Finally something we can use. So here we go. I've got it converted to a mess, mesh. If I go into edit mode it's all just points and vertices and edges but again there's no fill on it. There's no sol solidity to it. So what we can do is we can select a portion of this, which I'm just going to use the circle select tool and select like these edges here. Once we have some vertices selected, I'm going to hit F and ooh, create a face. Well, kind of. It didn't quite work. Why didn't it quite work? Well, the problem is right now it's got too many points too close together. You see, I, I skipped a point in the middle and that caused it to confuse. So let's undo that real fast. What I want you to do in edit mode while we're still here, select everything with the A, make sure that we're in point mode or line mode, and hit M and merge by distance. What this is going to do is it's going to find points that are within a certain closeness of each other. And if you go to the lower left hand side of the 3D view and expand out the properties menu for that, you can change the merge distance. Now, I did this merge and it told me it already merged some objects together. That's cool, but I'm going to increase that merge distance to maybe, ooh, let's see, 0 0.01 millimeters. And you see how that got rid of a bunch of points and it, it removed 1,000 vertices? That's pretty good. Do I want to push it even further? No, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but you, you know, actually I do. I'm going to push it to 0 0.1. Nope, that was bad. 0 0.01. 0 0.001, now 0.01 is the one that I like right now, 0 0.01, play with it like I did just there. Now the thing to be careful about is it might make something happen that is bad. I don't see any of them, I'm trying to find one that's bad right now, actually maybe I'll 0.02 it, that'll make it happen. So we want each of these lines to have one in and one out. If it does a Y or an X, that's bad. For instance, do you see this point here at the end of my S? This point right here has four going into it and out of it, and we would need to fix that. Now I'm gonna fix that just by going to point oh one, and you see it's, it's not merging them too close, but if we go back to point oh two, that's bad. Let's see, what else do we got? Oh, here on the corner. It kind of makes a little Ursa Minor here, <laughs> like a star chart. Yeah, these points here, we can't make a shape out of a straight line of points, so that's bad. So we would have to delete those and clean them up. And you can do that if you want. In fact, maybe, you know what, for this example, I'm going to go with 0.02. So there's things that I have to clean up so that if you have to clean them up, you can see how I'm going to do that. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, before we go on, I want you to watch my screen for just one second. I showed you earlier that if we select points and hit F, we could create a new face from those points. But if I if I add just a circle, circles are wonderful in Blender because they don't fill them in. It's wonderful for this purpose anyways. I'm going to duplicate my circle and scale it in just a little bit. Okay, put that down so it's not in the way. Then I'm going to grab the previous circle and I'm going to join them so all their points are together. If I select all these points and hit F, it tries to make a face out of this circle and make a face out of this circle and they're overlapping, but it doesn't, this isn't what we wanted, is it? We wanted it to punch a hole in it. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's undo that. Let's deselect everything and let's just select some points on the edge here, making sure that we have more than two or one or two points. Make sure that there's three or more points selected on any given side. And I'll show you why that's important later. Then hit F. And that makes that complete. Now, if I hold down Alt and select the line between two points, it'll try and connect them all. And then if I hold down Alt, Shift and Alt and select the other points, it'll connect them all. And because there's nothing but one point, it's got just this perfect little C shape. I hit F, boom, it's perfect. It can do a C shape. It can wrap around something. But the moment that a circle completes, it's a problem. And we kind of have to bridge that edge. So now that that's done, let's delete that and let's see how that applies to this mesh that we're doing here. 
So I'm going to go back into edit mode. And can you see any places where we have like a donut, where we have an inside shape and an outside shape, and we want the inside shape to be a hole? I see several right here, but an obvious one is this O right here. So I'm going to go to the edge of the O, and I'm going to select just as many points as make sense. And my, to my eye, that kind of makes sense, to just grab everything across the top. I could have grabbed everything across the bottom just as well. Hit F, make that face there, and now the middle and the outside is connected. Now, I said I had a problem here, and I do, because this point right here ha connects to four other points. We don't want that. We want each point to connect to one, so I'm going to have to break a connection somewhere. So I'm going to go to Edge Select Mode, and I'm going to select this edge and delete it. I'm going to select this edge and delete it. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to Point Select Mode, and I'm going to select those two points down here, and I'm going to hit F just with two points to connect them with a the line segment. So F, F is the tool that we're going to be using now here. And in fact, I'm going to select all of these points down here on that little, on that little, uh, what's it called? Like the Florida panhandle sort of shape. I'll think of the word later, but you get the idea. I'm just going to fill that in right now. Maybe I'll, I'll fill in this one right here. Okay, let's go to those other problem spots. Remember the end here where it branched into a Y? Yeah, I'm just going to select those two points and delete them. And then... Oh, wow, look at this right here. I have to make a decision right here. So I've got all of these points here. These these are bad. And in fact, I see a little triad here that's not good. Do I want to just delete all of these? Or do I want to maybe try and connect this up here and clear out the middle? I've got choices. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to select all of these points and delete them. I'm going to grab this point and I'm going to hit G and move it down here. So that's that's a little bit closer to what I want. It's It's got a long end on it, but I'm going to go with it. But now we've got a donut that we need to clear up. So I'm going to just grab the entire top of the donut here, and I'm going to hit F. And, ooh, that didn't work. That messed up. It kind of crossed over. It didn't know which one was mating with which. So let's, let's undo that, and let's do a smaller section. Let's just grab this side right here. There we go. And maybe I'll grab... Maybe I'll grab this side over here as well. There we go. Perfect. Love it. Do I want to go all the way down to here? Well, why not? Let's be bold. Let's grab... Remember, middle click to deselect. But let's grab all of these and make that one. And let's grab all of these. Oh, I got another Y down here. So I'm going to ignore that Y. I'm going to ignore that one right there because I'm going to delete it in a second. And hit F and make a face there. Now I'll delete that little Y right there. So one there. Oh, I kind of wish that it went over. Oh, and look, I got a triangle here. Well, that's easy. Delete the triangle. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to instead do this one. Now, if you're looking at this, and, and here's another donut we got to correct. I, I could say, okay, I'm going to start here and here. And then I'm going to bring it all the way around here, right? And all the way around back to here. <laughs> I've now selected all the points in the middle, so if I hit F, yeah, it's it's just going to treat those as one connected, so we can't do too much. So if, if you do it and it just doesn't work, undo and select a smaller section. And, I mean, you could control this on a very micro level. You could just go crazy with your control, but I, I, I like to do it in as big a section as possible. So... This is what I want you to do now. This is the part where I say pause the video and go through your own mesh and then put them all together so that the donuts are all connected and uh, and everything's all connected. Uh, and I'll come back after I've got all my donuts connected to show you what I'm going to do next. So let's go. Actually, this is a good place to stop for just a little while. So save your work and I will see you in the next video where we will finish our work on the snowflake and we'll get it wrapped up so that you can print it then. You're doing great. Hang in there and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens.
Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.